Dear God, it's beautiful. Hello fellow Hearts of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another episode of Heavy Contrast. Heavy Contrast is a series where I try to paint one miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paint and highlights. And in this episode I paint another Stormcast and in this case it's a Hallowed Night. So let's get cracking. As you can see, we're starting from a base coat of Lead Belcher Spray. And before we apply any contrast layers, I'm going to highlight this because it's way too dark for what I want it to be, using a 1 to 1 mix of Grey Knight Steel and Iron Breaker. And what I will do, just because it's faster, I'm going to apply a highlight, clean my brush and feather this out into the rest of the mini. If you don't feel comfortable feathering, what you can do is instead layering, doing a one to one mix of grey nut steel, iron breaker, and lead belcher, and then the pure grey nut steel plus iron breaker. That way you will have two steps and it will be much, much easier. Or you can just apply this using glazes. Our armor is now completely highlighted, or pre-highlighted basically, and I'm now going to apply a layer of contrast over this. And this is going to be Grief Charger Grey, straight out from the pot, and I will just apply this over all the armor. As always, I like to go section by section. Moving my brush in the directions I want the highlights to be. And once I'm done with a full section, I go back to the pot, clean the brush and absorb any excess. And while I'm absorbing, I'm also kind of moving the paint where I want it. Just like that. Reef Charger Grey has a beautiful hue to shade steel and it's so transparent and nice that it just goes again straight out of the pot or the pre-shaded base coat or you can use a lighter shade of silver if you want I just prefer doing it this way our layer of retouch of gray is now mostly dry it's right now that I can show you the next step. For this, I'm going to take Leviathan Blue and I'm going to do a couple of things. With pure Leviathan Blue, I'm going to do a recess shade. Just basically defining all the shapes. Around ribbons and stuff like that. And all the borders against the parts that are not going to be metallic. And on top of that, I'm going to thin the Leviathan Blue into a glaze using contrast medium and just basically adding a teeny tiny bit of Leviathan Blue into a pool of contrast medium until it's this sort of consistency right there, very transparent. And I'm going to apply this on the shadows. So as you can see, I'm moving my brush from the lighter parts into the darkest. I'm finishing my brush stroke down there and I'm creating this subtle blue shadow, which is reinforcing that greenish blue previous shadow and not only reinforcing it, but adding a, another tone, another hue, uh, which will create a much more interest and uh, color and variation. With all the shading now done, it's time to re-highlight all the armor. From this, I'm going to go back to my first broad highlight of a 1-to-1 mix of Grey Knight Steel, 
an iron breaker. I'm going to thin this down into a sort of a heavy glaze consistency, as you can see here. You can see how transparent that is. And I'm going to glaze this to the upper panel, to the upper sections of each panel. Of course, you can always clean the brush and feather out the transition as we did before. And of course, with a straight up mix without any thinning, I'm going to do an edge highlight all over the piece. As thin as you can. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into the last highlight for the armor, and this is Stonehold Silver. And I'm just going to do a very small highlight with this. Just the most extreme highlight. So here in the rounded part, we have like a volumetric highlight. I'm just going to do a small dot there of this. And probably catch the corners, rivets, and stuff like that. With the steel armor now finished, I'm going to move into basically in all of the non-metallic details and I'm going to start with all the leather and cloth and for this I'm going to use mechanic standard grey. I'm going to basically anything that will be leather, no matter what color it would be in the end. And all the connecting pieces of cloth. And I'm going to base coat any parts that will be blue using a 2 to 1 mix of Cantor Blue and Tempered God Blue. This is two parts Cantor Blue and one part Tempered God Blue. All the base coats are now done and I'm going to start with the red leather. For this I'm going to use Flesterous Red over all the parts that I want to be red leather. You have to be very, very careful with this not to touch any of the armor, because fixing it, well, you will just have to repaint it fully. And I'm going to apply Black Templar over all the black leather details. I want to add a bit more definition into the red leather details, so I'm going to do another layer. This one is black temper mixed with contrast medium. This is one part black temper, four parts contrast medium. And I will apply this over all the red details. And now for the blue details I'm going to layer. I want to a mix of Leviathan blue and contrast medium over all of them. With all that done, now I'm going to start highlighting all the leather details and, I, and I'm going to start with the black ones. And for this, I'm going to take Mechanical Standard Grey. And what I will do is just a simple edge highlight over all the black leather details. For the next highlight on the black leather details, I'm going to take Administratum Grey. And I'm basically going to do this the same edge highlight. This time I will just try to make it a bit smaller and more focused towards the main highlight areas. And for the final highlight on the black leather details, I'm going to take with full and grain and just going to do very small dots of full and grey just in the very corners.
with the black leather now done I'm going to move into the red leather and for the first highlight I'm going to take cone red and I'm just going to do a kind of a heavy glaze with this sort of consistency and I'm going to apply this over the upper surfaces of the leather. In the case of the belt, the upper facing surface is the bottom surface. For the next step on the leather I'm going to do a full edge highlight as thin as I can using a 3 to 1 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Cone Red. And to finish off the red leather I'm going to take pure Cadian Flesh Tone and I'm going to do the last highlight just on the corners, just like that. Our red leather is, well, it's almost finished but I'm not going to paint this now because it's a pain in the ass. So I will do that a bit later on. I'm going to move into the blue details. And for this I'm going to start highlighting using the same mix we use for the base coat. And I'm filling this down to this sort of consistency. Well, I want, I'm going to do it a bit more, just like this. So this sort of consistency. And I'm going to do basically a heavy glaze over the rounded bits to create a focal highlight. And of course I'm going to edge highlight everything and I'm going to do a thick edge highlight with this. The key here is you want to make sure you can do a thinner edge highlight on top of this later on. For the next highlight on the blue details I'm going to move into pure temper guard blue. And for this I'm going to thin it down exactly the same to the same sort of consistency you can see, you can see there. And I'm going to apply that a spot highlight again, this time taking less space, just like that, and I'm going to do the same edge highlight but this time making a bit more focus towards the edges and the corners. And now for the final highlight on the blue details, I'm going to use a kind of a weird color, but it works very well, Gauss Blaster Green. As you can see, I'm just doing, I'm just making very small dots of this in the most prominent details. And I will do a very small dot of this in the center of the reflection. With all those areas now fully highlighted, it's now time to move into the gold details and for this I'm just going to base coat and using Retributor Armor. All the gold bits are now base coated and now I'm going to do a layer of Killiman Flesh over all the details. With the layer of Killiman Flesh now dry I'm going to take Gurgron to Fur and I'm going to do some extra shading have it my Gurgron to Fur thin with contrast medium to about this sort of consistency, so quite thin. And I'm just going to apply this into any place where I want a bit more of a controlled shading.
You can also use Fire Slayer Flesh. Works really well, I did for my Hammers of Sigmar video. But of course, I want to show you guys different ways of doing things in each video. So this time I'm using Gurgrunt of Fur, which works fantastically. With that extra shady done, I'm going to move into the last step. This will be Cygor Brown. And I will just use this to define any panel lines. Or for example, here on the scales, I'm running Cygor Brown to define every single scale separately. And I will also use this to outline any rivets. With that extra shading done, I'm going to move into Retributor Armor and I'm thinning it down a bit so it's a bit transparent and I'm going to go back and highlight all the gold details. Now I'm going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Retributor Armor and Stronghold Silver and I'm going to edge highlight all the gold details. And finally, I'm going to take pure Stormhole Silver. And I'm just going to do a dot highlight on the corners, etc. Just the very brightest highlight. With all the gold highlighted, you can see that I also did a couple of cleanups and base coats. I clean up all the rest of the steel details that are not armor using lead belcher, just what I uh, messed up. And then I base coated all the rest of the details, including this parchment here and the white symbol on his shoulder pad using Corax White. And now I'm going to shade all the steel details using, using a 1 to 3 mix of Black Templar and Contrast Medium. This is one part Black Templar, three parts Contrast Medium. Now I'm going to apply this over all these steel details that are not armor. And I'm also going to use this same mix on his blade, but I'm going to do a TMM pattern. So I'm going to do light and dark, dark and light. So I'm going to apply it to this side. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to feather it out. Just like that. And it's very important you leave this to dry and don't touch it. I will probably do a couple of layers of this until I'm happy with the depth. While the black temper dries, I'm going to take a mix of one part wildwood with four parts contrast medium and I'm going to apply it over the parchment. This is one part wildwood and four parts contrast medium. As always, I'm going to do a layer and then go back and absorb any excess that went where I don't want it to be. And now for the white symbols, I'm going to take Space Wolves Grey and I'm going to apply it strategically over the symbol. So I'm going to shade the lower half of this bed, the upper side of this one. And I'm going to go alternating which part of the symbol I shade on its side. 
and with that white symbol now shaded I'm just going to take pure white and I'm going to do the final highlight which will be just a simple edge highlight highlighting the middle ridge and very carefully the outer perimeter With the white done I'm going to finish this parchment before finishing the blade and the model and for this I'm going to just do a simple edge highlight using palette witch flesh. And just because I cannot help myself, I'm going to do the final highlight using pure white. And just in the very sharpest corners. With all those bits now done, it's time to finish the model by finishing the steel bits. And for this I'm going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Storfall Silver and Lead Belcher. And I'm just going to edge highlight all the steel details. And now for the very last touches of highlighting, I'm going to take pure Stronghold Silver. And then just going to do the, the same edge highlight, but very concentrated towards the very tips. And with that last step done, the shield and the base painted, and the rim is still drying, our Hallowed Night Stormcast is done. And this is probably my best TMM work to date, so I'm very proud of it, and I really hope you like it as much as I do. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media. You have all the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me without any additional cost to you. I finally have a link for the brushes that I use down there. Don't forget to check the merch that you can see just below this video in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video. Or if you prefer, you can just click the join button below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you won't get something back for you as I said guys. Thank you very much for watching, a special thank you to Heather Amster, Lauren Sigismondi, Nicolas Furnell, Terrainosaur, Christoph Moret, Javi Mota, Kim Anderson, Michael Boye, Table Miniatures, Thomas Ustergaard, Beldrain, Victor Domen, Aequita, Saron Del Carlos Rivera, Charles Armintas, Chris Fivey, Kieran Murthy, Darcy Farah, Dr. V, Gareth Smith, G4, Jamie Milligan, Josh Simpson, JT Butler, Kevin Mian, Kevin Sula, Sonal Lindemann, Mark Baker, Mark Jarvis, Matthew Miller, Natius Maximus, One, Brastrock, Better, Oscar Jonathan Thornberg, Samuel Sasapa, Supernet, Fantastic, for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks on my Patreon and take control.